Marquis Scramble Campbell. We're here at Red Rocks Amphitheater in the Visitor Center in the Southwest Airlines, the Heart of Rock Theater. Right behind me is a painting that I created over three months, and it's called Impressions on the Sacred Stones. And what I'm doing is taking you through the history of Red Rocks via a piece of artwork. It's actually framed in the actual seats from the amphitheater that are in the process of being uh, put in. The whole entire composition that you see is an aerial view of Red Rocks. It's actually from the Morrison point of, point of view. Right under here it would be uh, Ship Rock into Creation Rock. This actual back part right here that you see is the top of mezzanine for the visitor center. And this is the top of the bowl going down to the stage. This would be, this round part would be the actual stage. What we, what we depict down here is, uh, this, this right here is the Ute Indian tribes. That's who actually was here doing their ceremonies uh, for many centuries. That when they've been doing excavation here around Red Rocks, they found out that there was over 14,000 years of Indian ceremonies going on here. This large picture of this Indian chief right here is Chief Colorado. He's the last holdout chief to actually discourage the pioneers from coming into this area. And this is where I celebrate the, uh, the Indians right here. Right up on the very top right there, you see the guy with the mustache. He's actually Arthur Lake. He's the man that found the dinosaur bones back in the late 1870s. Right to the right is the founder of, of the city of Morrison. His name's George Morrison. His, his actual uh, homestead is still down in Morrison to this day. I got it streaming down to where the, the railroad, the railroad, because the railroad is actually how people actually started coming out here. It was actually a three and a half hour horse and buggy ride before the railroad came out here. So back in the, in the early uh, 1900s, this gentleman, J.B. Walker, he purchased this property and he sold it to the city of Denver in like uh, uh, 1928 to the city of Denver. And this is George Cranmer, the city director that actually had the, they call him the visionary of Red Rocks. And he actually came up with the, with the plan because he's actually been around the world seeing that this, uh, that this amphitheater could be a place kind of like that they have instead of Rome and, and, and Turkey and in Greece and such. So he actually hired this gentleman right here Burnham Point, which is the architect that came up with the design to, to have the seats going into the middle of these gigantic rocks. So then I started putting in more of the elements of that, that we have right here. We have the, the CCC that's actually building the place right here. We have the Friends of Red Rocks that are actually helping preserve the place. Right along this very top area, we have uh, Louis Armstrong, Bob Marley, the, the Beatles, Nat King Cole, Ella Fitzgerald, Betty Goodman, Johnny Cash, Ray Charles, Willie Nelson, uh, Jody Collins, uh, Joan Baez, Bob Dylan, here's all of the uh, widespread panic, String Cheese Incident, Blues Traveler, Bobby Weir, and, and uh, Jerry Garcia of the Grateful Dead, Trey and Fish, we, over here we have uh, Carlos Santana, we have Lily Pond, which is a famous opera singer that's in the Hall of Fame. We have the conductor for the Colorado Symphony. We have Mrs. Black, who ran the facility back then. We have Tad Bowman that runs the facility right now. We have Rob, the, the shuttle driver that takes people up. We have right here, we have John Denver playing with play the guitar right here. You have James Taylor. We have Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. Here we have Stevie Ray Vaughan, B.B. King, and Buddy Guy. Down here we have uh, Barry Fay, he was actually a promoter that actually promoted a lot of the earlier larger concerts here with Jimi Hendrix, Jethro Tull, Bruce Springsteen. Right here we have Chuck Morris that actually brought in U2, this is Bono and The Edge. And right above it would be like this peace flag. And right, in the, right inside, the, inside of there I actually put John Lennon's face. Because if you were inside of uh, New York, you, you went to Central Park to, se to celebrate the life of John Lennon when he got shot in 1980. Here, if you were inside the Denver metropolitan area, you came to Red Rocks. So everybody was inside the stands uh, celebrating his life, just being silent, and then they went down to the stage and held hands and sang, give peace a chance. That's why I have kind of like this peace stuff flying over the middle of it. And the center part is kind of like a sundial, which is also the center of a dream catcher that's kind of like these, uh, these, these feathers floating, floating outward. There's a couple things that are kind of hidden inside of there. Right along here, we have some people that were uh, piano players. We have 
Bill McKay of Leftover Salmon, we have John Tesh, Jerry Lee Lewis, we have Leftover Salmon up in here. They, they have one of the bands that actually allowed me to paint up on stage with them. And this is my wife, Shay, and this is myself, because now we're trying to make our own little history. Since I've been here it's in 2000, I've actually created over 200 paintings here.